Kelvin, can you show us a bit more how you have used uh, MobLab in your face-to-face -face lectures at ASU and also particularly last spring when your classes were moved online? Uh, I believe you have a little activity uh, for us prepared, right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, let me share my screen here with you. So this is the um, what we call just the instructor console where instructors can uh, see all of, you know the play, the different what we call playlist, uh, basically a list of things uh, in, in here. So this is actually the pre webinar assignment that many of you have completed. Thank you for doing that. Uh, but as you saw in that assignment, uh, you know what you have is first you have things like surveys, which could include uh, you know just maybe just questions with no right or wrong answers. And I love asking these questions in class if I just want to pull the class. Um, and so I believe uh, Bob will be talking more about the survey results on uh, on this uh, pre-webinar assignment that you guys do later on. So I'll leave it to him. Uh, but there are also things where, you know, maybe you can just do, uh, you know, free form answers like the charity choice you did. So there's a lot of different variation. You can put videos like a game instruction video, uh, you know, as a question, if you want students to be watching these, uh, you know, of course, multiple choice questions, you can embed images. So, so, so I do a lot of these things uh, in the classroom is a little different because I don't need to embed an image if I can show it up in the front uh, of the room and say, this is the example that we're working with. And then students can answer questions from there. And of course we have the games. Um, uh, here in the playlist, the Prisoner's Dilemma Matrix game. So um, we're going to be playing one in a bit. So, you know, now is a great time if you uh, don't know where your username and password that was sent to you at some point, you know, now's the time to dig that up. And uh, we're going to do actually a live game uh, in, in the webinar here. Uh, so let me actually get this uh, active. And so if you want to log in and participate, this is a different game than uh, what uh, you are you were uh, playing, and I'll tell you the rules in a bit. Uh, but this should make it easy for you to see the game um, the during webinar playlist. Okay, so now while this is active, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what you'll be playing. You'll be playing a game called Push and Pull. Now here you see it's called Prisoner's Dilemma Push and Pull. Um, and, and so, you know, when you play this with students, when I play this with students, I don't usually tell them uh, this is a prisoner's dilemma game. I just tell them, look, you are going to, you have two choices. You either can uh, pull $300 away from just, you know, just a pot of money in the middle, right? So you both start with $0. You can pull $300 towards yourself for yourself, or you can push $400 to the other person. Um, and so, the amount of money that you earn each round is, of course, going to be uh, a, a total of, uh, you know, how much money was either pulled or pushed, you know, to you. Um, and so, for example, this is a demo game, so I'll just I'll just say I'll pull three hundred dollars. So I'm pulling three hundred for myself, but the other person pushed four hundred to me, so I get seven hundred, and the other person gets zero. And we're going to play three rounds of this. You can always either pull three hundred or push four hundred. Um, and I'm also going to enable chat. So uh, this is where, if you want to, you can chat with the other person, maybe ask them how they're doing. I don't know, right? Whatever you want to do. Uh, but I always tell my students uh, that these chat messages uh, can be, we can monitor those, monitor those, so you know, be civil. But of course, I don't need to tell you guys that. Um, so there's three rounds of that. So I'll maybe let you guys uh, log in and, 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 um, and let's see, we have 26 people. Maybe we'll wait a few, a few more seconds just to say, um, and also, if you can't log in right away, you can still log in uh, as the game is playing because it can accept users as we go. Okay, so you're playing against each other. This is much like you would play a game in a live classroom. Uh, and this is what I had to do after the, uh, the, the uh, pandemic where we went remote and I had to play these games on Zoom with my, with my students. So this is much like a live session game, which you would do in a regular classroom. Okay. So we have 40 people. I think that's a good amount to start. So I'm going to hit begin and you're going to play three rounds. Again, you can chat. So maybe say hi if you want to, and I'll start it now. And I believe Bob, can you show also? Um, I certainly can. I will show yeah, so, so just as a player. Yeah. The student perspective as a student. for everyone who is just auditing and not actively uh, participating. But so basically Kelvin now, everyone was randomly matched, right, with 
one of the other participants. Correct. And are they going to be with the same player for the entire three rounds or yes. is it rematch? Yep, you keep the same person that you're playing with for, uh, for all three, three rounds. Okay. So here we have Bob. And then the activity for everyone who is still getting logged in, it's called during webinar, I believe, right? Yes, the during webinar. Just click on during webinar and then and so for everyone who is just auditing, we can just uh, monitor Bob right now. Now, one question that always comes up is, uh, what if I, as an instructor, I have an odd number of students, you know, and somebody is just by himself in the group? Yeah, so that's a great question. So let me actually steal Bob's screen back. Um, and, and let me show here. So this is perfect because right now we do have an odd per, uh, someone in a group by themselves. And right now they're not playing with anyone because of course there's no one there. So there's a really easy button that just says add robots. And I didn't even have to click it because someone just joined. But you know, usually as, as the game go, gets going in the class and, and you see that one group has less than the optimal number of players, you can add robots. Uh, robots are uh, for MobLab are nice. Uh, I believe they'll be talked about more later, but you know, there's some smart things that you can program the robots to do. So it's not just random moves um, that they do as well. Nice. So let's see here. So I see that uh, a lot of groups are done. There's some groups. So this is also, you know, when you're running a game live, you can see I'll add a robot to this one just so you can see. So now this new person is playing with a robot. Um, and you can see, you know, the which groups are done and you can kind of go from there and just get a sense of where the class is at as well. Um, so, so basically when you started the game, you don't necessarily have to wait until everybody is ready and logged in. People can still log in while the game is running. And then it's right. up to you kind of as the instructor to decide how much more time you want to give each group. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that's really flexible, which is nice because, um, you know, and, and I try to wait until most of my class is ready. Uh, which usually, you know, once in the middle of the semester, they're used to using MobLab. It doesn't take more than, you know, a minute for everyone to basically log on. There's always going to be students who come in late and they want to join late and it's, it's easy for them to join late. But I want to make sure that, you know, I don't just say, okay, go. And then like only two students out of 500 are ready. So I, I try to wait for, you know, at least most students to, to be uh, ready. Okay. Now, Kelvin, how many groups have already played? This yeah, so here, let me actually uh, just, uh, I, know, I know some groups are still playing, but um, I'm just going to finish it uh, here. So let me hit, so all you have to do is hit finish. Um, and the nice thing about Mob Lab, which I really like is when you run this in class, uh, you can share the results right away. Uh, you know, it, it used to be that you, you might have to say, okay, next class after I tabulate results and run some, Analysis, I can show you everything. So it's a very easy thing to do. Just click results, um, which will show you uh, all the results from the game. And I'm not going to get into, you know, explaining the push and pull results, but you can see that you can hide results and, and then kind of show students part by part and discuss things with students. And I think this is where students really learn. Uh, they just played the game. It's fresh in their minds. They are wondering why their partner might have chose a certain thing, or they are wondering, is there an optimal strategy for this? This is the time, the five to 10 minutes after the game where you can really hone in on the key points that you want to teach. And so, uh, you know, sometimes telling students at this point, hey, this is actually just like the prisoner's dilemma game. We can put it into a matrix and we can see whether the behavior uh, is what we expect. I think that's a very powerful tool there. Um, now, before I forget, I also wanted to use the results from uh, this game to draw a a uh, winner for the, uh, the, the charity that Mob Lab uh, was, uh, was going to, or asked about in the pre-webinar questions. And so I also wanted to show this fun tool that you can use in your class for however you want. You just have to click on scoreboard um, and then you can go to the lottery. And what this will do is basically just, uh, you know, pick uh, a random person, you know, to, to win something in class. If you want to give a candy bar away or whatever. So I'm going to draw one, and so user 104, uh, that is our, our winner for today. So if you're user 104, I'm sure Mob Lab will contact you or something yeah. afterwards, we, right? We, um, user 104, you know who you are. And we will, after the webinar, get in touch with you regarding the donation for the charity of your choice. 
Now, since we're already in the scoreboard, um, from just what my experience, students also always want to know who won, right? Who got the highest score? Who got the most points? Sure. So we just show. Yeah. Oh yeah. Do we have so, a winner? Yeah. So so you can. I, uh, well, I. So there's enough people to just show us. So so usually if if there's not like uh, if there's only like ten people playing, you know, you don't want to do show off because then you know who's in last place. Uh, but at least here, uh, you know, these are the the top payoffs. So someone got. Uh, 2,100 points. Uh, so congratulations, user 93, for getting the most points. You, you were able to get 700 for all three rounds, which you had a very trusting partner. 